So let's dive back into this Cassini demo. Okay, we're going to start off just exactly where we left off before. So we'll go to uh, Xcode here. So I'm just going to open Cassini. And here it is. I'm just going to run it real quick just to remind you where we were for those with short memories, even though it was only two days ago. All right, here it is. So we've got um, our image view, right? We have an image view, and it's inside a UI scroll view. And so we're able to scroll around, OK, just by panning with our finger. My mouse is like the finger there, so I'm just panning around. Um, and that's all we can do, OK? But we've created this nice UI or this nice image view controller, which is an MVC that lets you take any image and put it on screen inside the scroll view. That's kind of a nice reusable, reusable MVC. Right. So now we're going to make this a multi MVC app. Okay. And I'm going to reuse this image view controller as one of the MVC. So let's go right to our storyboard. See what this is going to look like. This is where the Cassini part of this whole thing is going to come in. All right. I'm going to create a new view controller. Just going to drag it out right here. Again, I'm going to go fairly quickly because I've done this all before. So this is almost like a review uh, for you here. So I have this controller. It needs to have a custom subclass of UI view controller. So I'm going to create such a thing. Go here to new file. It's iOS source. It's a Cocoa Touch class because it's a subclass of an iOS class, which is UI view controller in this case. I'm going to call this Cassini view controller because it's going to let us look at some Cassini images. That's what our app is going to do. I put this in the same place as always. Here is our Cassini view controller. Um, I'm going to remove the view controller lifecycle methods that it gives me uh, right here, just for now anyway. Um, and I'm actually going to uncomment this prepare for segue because my Cassini view controller is definitely going to be doing uh, some segueing. So let's now go back to our storyboard now that we have this image view controller class. And I'm going to change the class of this controller right here with the identity inspector to be a Cassini view controller. Okay, everybody got that? Um, I'm going to put this whole MVC structure into that split view with navigation controller in there, the thing that will work on both iPad and iPhone, the exact same thing uh, we did for uh, the emotions view controller. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to start by dragging out a split view controller. I'm going to zoom way out here. Let's go get a split view controller. Here it is. I'll drag it out. Um, I'll get rid of these extra things that came along here with the split view controller because I already have my master in detail right here. The Cassini is going to be my master and this image view controller is going to be my detail right there. So I'm just going to control drag, hook up my master, I'm going to control drag, to hook up my detail. I'm also going to take my little entry arrow and make it so that it enters on the split view controller, right, instead of entering on my image view controller, obviously. And uh, I want this to work on both iPhone and iPad, so I'm going to take my master and put it, embed it inside of a navigation controller. Okay. And uh, maybe I could even go in here and put a nice title here on here, Cassini. Okay. All right, now, what is this UI going to do? What's it going to look like? How's it going to function? Well, I'm just going to have three buttons here, similar to how I had an emotions view controller. In a demo, I can only do, I can't do a nice complicated MVC like a calculator and then another complicated one like a graph view. I have to do a simple one. So I'm going to do a simple one here where I'm going to put three buttons, and those three buttons are just going to cause three different images from NASA, okay, about Cassini, which is this, uh, a little... Uh, things sent out into space to take pictures. Uh, I'm going to put those three buttons here, and then we're just going to segue, as we know how to do, uh, down to here, which is going to be our image view controller. Right? So the image view controller is just going to show the image. And we already know that the image view controller is a nice little reusable MVC that shows an image. So it's perfect, exactly what I want. So I'm going to go down here and get the buttons. So let's do this button right here. Uh, let's go ahead and make it bigger. We'll say 40 point. It'd be a pretty good uh, size here. And uh, make three of them, copy, paste, paste, so I get that. Okay, one of them is going to be called Earth. Another one is going to be called Cassini. And another one is going to be called Saturn. Okay, and then I'm just going to take these three things, of course, and put them in a stack view. Okay, we'll go ahead and have the stack view be uh, fill. And we'll also do, again, fill equally. It doesn't really matter because they're all identical. They're all buttons. And we'll put a little spacing in there, maybe 20 points, something like that. 
Then I'm going to drag this into the middle, use my blue lines right there so that I can go here and say reset to suggested constraints. And then I'm going to go over to my size inspector and double check that it did the kind of constraints I want, which that looks good to me. It's going to align these things uh, in the center. Okay, so here's our UI right here. Now all we need to do is have these three things segue down to here to show these images. Now um, I'll show you where these images come from in a minute here, but let's just create uh, this segue. Now I'm going to do something a little different with this segue. In our last one, I, each segue had its own identifier that was different, and it was the identifier that let us know which emotion to show in the emotions one. Here I'm going to have them all have the same identifier, and I'm going to use the title of the button to decide which image. Okay, so it's kind of a cross between what we did in the calculator and what we did in emotions, all right? So let's go ahead and create these things. So I'm going to um, control drag, okay, from Saturn down to here. This is in a split view, right? So I'm going to do show detail. That's the kind of segue I want, not show. Uh, same thing with Cassini right here, show detail. And then up here to Earth, show detail. Whoops, not present modally, undo. Let's try that again. Show detail, okay? So we've got these three things here. Let's go ahead and inspect them. I'm going to put an identifier on them, but they're all going to have the same identifier. And what that means is when prepare for segue gets called, it's going to be called and the same thing is going to happen for each one. Again, I'm going to look at the sender and prepare for segue to know which button, but we're going to use the same code. So I'm going to call this show image because that's what it does, okay? When you click on here to segue, it segues to this image view controller and shows an image. Okay, so let's make sure all three of them are doing that. Okay, so everybody cool with this? This is all just review. I haven't done anything new yet here. Okay, now of course we know if we want these little segues here to work, we need to prepare them. So let's go back to our Cassini uh, view controller right here and do our prepare for segue. I'm going to show you something that's kind of nice to do from a clean coding mechanism, which is I like to create a private struct here to st store my constants that are strings in the storyboard. So I usually call this thing storyboard, okay? And then I just put these static lets inside. So the show image segue equals show image. So that this string, and basically any string that I put anywhere in my storyboard, like in these, when I inspect these things down here, like this string, okay, that that's all collected here into this nice struct, okay? So we already know that this is what we do to do constants, okay? I'm just calling this group of constants storyboard. They're my storyboard con constants, all right? All right, so let's do prepare for segue right here. Uh, what do we need to do in prepare for segue? Well, um, first of all, we probably want to make sure that this is the show image segue. So I'm going to say if the segues identifier equals the storyboard show seg image segue, okay, then we know that this is what we're preparing for. And remember, in a complicated app, you might have multiple different kinds of segues, like we had in emotions actually with different identifiers going off. So that's why we almost always check the identifier first just to make sure uh, that we are doing the right thing. And usually we'll try and spell identifier properly. Okay, so now we know this is the right segue. We need to get the MVC that we're segueing to so we can prepare it. So we know that's supposed to be an image view controller. So I'm gonna say if I can let IVC, short for image view controller, equal the segues destination view controller as an image view controller, okay? So if I, I don't even need parentheses there, sorry. So if I can get that destination view controller as an image view controller, then now I'm ready to prepare this thing. So how do I need to prepare it? Well, it depends on which button is doing this show image. Okay, so I'm actually going to look back at the button. Now, here's the button. Remember, in prepare for segue, the sender is the button or the line in a table or something like that that caused it to happen. So I need to convert this into a button. So I could actually do this like this. I could say if I can let the sending button equal the sender as a UI button, then I can go forward here and say, let's let the image name, that's the name of the image we want to show, equal the sending buttons, current title. Oops, not current image, current title. All right, so this will be one way to do this, okay? But kind of a cool way here is this is this, right? So what if I took this cut and put it in here like that? Okay, so I don't need this. Except for this is if let. 
So if I put this in here, this is going to be an optional. I can't send current title to an optional. So how can I deal with that? Let's use optional chaining. Okay, so it's perfectly legal to use the optional chaining stuff on the end of some, some other expression that returns a possible optional. And remember, if this is nil right here, then this whole thing is just going to be ignored. That's what the question mark means. It means if it's nil, nil, then just return nil and ignore it. That means image name is going to be returned to nil. Okay, see how I did that? Just cleans up our code a little bit uh, to do that. Less if, de if thens and all that uh, business around there. Okay, now I'm going to go get the image that goes with this button's title. Now let me show you how we're going to do that. This demo URL class, remember the one that had the little Stanford URL in there? Well, it also has these NASA URLs, one for Cassini, one for Earth, and one for Saturn. Those are the three buttons we have. And I have a little function right here that just gets the name of the image and looks it up in that dictionary right here, okay, and returns it. So this is a little function called NASA image name. So let's use this NASA image name. I'm just going to say uh, right here that the IBC's image URL equals the NASA image named this image name. Okay, this thing I got right here. All right, uh, and then, oops, sorry, this has got to be demo URL dot, because it's over here in this demo URL. Notice this is a static function, right? NASA image name is a static function, so we send it to the class demo URL. That's why I had to put demo URL here. Okay? It's kind of a utility function for that little demo URL class. And while we're at it, you know what? Let's set the title of that MVC to be that image name as well. So that way we'll get Earth or Cassini or whatever as the title of that MVC. <coughs> Okay, does this make sense? What do you all hear? Now, um, let's go ahead and run this and see if this is working. There we go. Okay, there we go. So here's Cassini right here. And if I click Earth, okay, whoa. So it worked. I clicked Earth, but nothing's happening in my app. Oh, wait, no, there. Oh, it's showing Stanford. Why is it showing Stanford here? Well, that's because our nice reusable image view controller we have over here, it's view did load smashes Stanford on top of everything. So that we only put that in there as a demo, right? So I'm taking that out. Sorry about that. Makes everyone see what happened there. So now let's go back here. It won't be slamming a Stanford in there in our reusable image view controller. Okay. So now we go back to Cassini. We'll pick Earth this time again seems like it's kind of stuck. I, I can't click on any of these buttons. I can't, actually I can't do anything. Oh, there it is. Okay, so that must have been a really big image. It took a very long time uh, to load, and here it is. It doesn't really look like Earth, but pictures of people on Earth. Hmm, that's interesting. Let's try one of these other. Let's try Cassini here. Okay, what's happening? This is basically just blank. What's going on here? How about Saturn? Again, taking a really long time. You can see why we're going to talk about multi-threading a little later. Okay, and here it is. Okay, that's not good either. All right, so we got to start here. Um, we know that Cassini's not working. It comes up blank. So why might Cassini not be working? Let's go back here and check, for example, to make sure that our segue is good. Okay, the Earth segue. Here's the Cassini segue. Let's go look at its identifier. Uh-oh, look at that. This Cassini identifier, no identifier. So let's put show image in here. Okay, so when you have a segue and it doesn't seem to be working, like it segues to the new MVC but the prepare doesn't happen, often you want to go back and look at your identifier, make sure it's set properly or, or set in there. Okay, so now if we go back here. All right, we have seen here, let's click on it. Again, it's loading. Oh, that one's a little, must be a smaller image. It loaded pretty quick. And here it is. It looks like it's just a bunch of outer space. Okay, so we got a problem here, which is that these images that I loaded are huge. That's created two problems for us. One, our app gets blocked. See, I can't click on anything else. I can't even rotate or anything here. My app is just completely stuck. You never want your app in that circumstance. Never should your app be stuck like that. Users will just basically double click on the home button and kill your app and never run it again. They'll think your app is totally hosed. And it is if it behaves that way, okay? So we really need to fix that. 